So I'm Kaz Zahota. I'm a consultant at Dot Collective. And the Dot Collective was established in 2021. We're really passionate about building fantastic data platforms for great organizations to be able to leap from. Rob? Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Rob Gallagher. I am the Chief Data Officer within Places for People. So I'm responsible for the data strategy for the organization um, and for the build of the data platform, which is being built to um, essentially deliver on that strategy. And in terms of building that platform, uh, we have decided to partner with Doc Collective. Um, there's a number of reasons why we are partnering with Doc Collective. Probably, primarily, it's around how they work and how they operate. They've got a fairly unique method of delivery, which is all about delivering real value to the business very quickly. So we can actually um, evidence return on investment in terms of what is typically a very expensive undertaking in terms of a delivering a data strategy. As well as that, Doc Collective have a fantastic collaborative way of working. So they're actively embedded within the data office, within my teams. They're not delivering a turnkey environment over there. They're actively working within the actual data office, bringing us on the journey with them um, with a view to eventually having us in a position where we're completely self-reliant um, and able to actually run the platform ourselves. And in terms of that partnership, to date, it's been going fantastically well. So within just six months, we have built a data platform um, from scratch. So that's six months of development time. Um, we have delivered prioritized business uh, use cases in terms of putting unprecedented um, transparency and detail into the hands of the business around their business processes, something they've never had before. Um, and within the data office itself, we've already realized massive savings. So we've already realized 30% savings in terms of FTE, primarily around the automation of very manual processes, or what was previously very manual processes. And we're on track for making about 1.5 million pounds worth of savings over the next five years, primarily around um, licensing and server costs, um, having moved to a, a cloud-based environment. Cool. So probably good to take a step back and have a, a little bit of a, a run through in terms of our story. So I joined the organization about 18 months ago. Um, as the first chief data officer within, within Places for People. Um, and although I had a team of really good data analysts, really good data engineers who were very, very passionate and uh, very skilled in terms of what they do, our maturity probably wasn't where it needed to be um, in terms of a, a data um, function. So we had a lot of scattered information. So we had a lot of um, data silos, uh, servers, individual data repositories scattered right the way across the organization. We had very manual processes, very much Excel-based, um, a lot of data extracts, a lot of data wrangling being done in Excel, a lot of effort to produce very little insight. Um, and what that led to was then further data silos and a complete lack of a single version of the truth. So we had lots of reports, lots of numbers, none of them really tied up with each other. And that led to a lot of faith, a loss of faith within the business in terms of like the numbers were actually presenting outwards. So essentially the target and the challenge we gave to Doc Collective was to design a accessible, trusted, and well-governed data platform um, that was fully secure, that had a real focus in putting tools into the hands of the business that would actually lead to actionable insight so we could really actually drive value from the data. And then to also have that data platform in a place where it was ready to scale. So within the housing industry, we're moving more and more towards instrumentation. That means IoT. That means real-time or near real-time streaming of potentially petabytes of data. That data platform that we're building at the moment has to be ready to be able to handle that. So um, that was a challenge we got to Doc Collective. And I'll hand across to Kaz in terms of how they approach that. Great. Thanks, Rob. Um, yeah, so the challenge was clear. You know, we knew the target, and <laughs> it wasn't small. <laughs> so first thing we had to do is go to ourselves, how do we do this in a value-driven way to be able to do this in the, with the right priorities in mind? So we absolutely recognized we needed to balance the delivery. Then we had to recognize as well that we're taking the business along that journey and building a process. So rather than landing a big platform, which we go, OK, here you go, guys. Here's the keys. Go run with it we knew that we had to do this in an evolutionary way. So we take the business along with us, with users in mind as well, and ensuring that throughout the process, we're enabling those teams to take the platform forward. So we're actually increasing data literacy, and we're educating people that are actually going to run with this in the future. So it was a really easy transition in the future to take the platform forward. And then also, as Rob alluded to earlier, we approach this in a collaborative way. So one of the unique things that we like to do at the Doc Collective is work with businesses as colleagues. So it's not we will just do the delivery and then hand it across and then disappear. 
we're actually part of the process. We're embedding ourselves with, with the right support structures in place and the working groups to get those priorities throughout, make sure that we're actually working with the business day in, day out. And then finally, we need to make sure that we're value driven. So, and this is where it actually leads into our next slide, which is about the methodology we like to use. And this is called the steel thread. So first of all, we make sure that we're working with the business to identify what the priorities are in advance. Next, we work through those priorities and design that with future use cases in mind. So not just targeting one point of value, so we deliver quickly, but how do we actually build a thread throughout the platform with all the different components that enable us to build more strands around it, more steel threads, so that the business can actually thrive in the future. So thinking about what are they going to adopt in the future? Are they going to do data science? Not just that initial point of value. Next, we build the thread, which we'll be talking about a little bit today as well. And then finally, we take that roadmap forward and we iterate, building more threads on top of the initial thread that we've built. So what did we do at Places for People? Well, we built the Insight Hub. And Rob, you can talk a little bit about the first use case. Sure. So in terms of the use cases we chose for the, the Insight Hub, our first phase of the data transformation, we chose to focus on assets and repairs. So for those of you who aren't in the housing industry, assets are literally our houses. They're, they're what we manage, they're what we build, they're what we um, uh, serve in terms of our customers. Um, repairs is the repairs associated with those, those properties, those houses, and it's typically a massive part of any housing um, association or any um, housing industry. So we focus on those two um, use cases, given the fact they would drive real business benefit, but also the fact that repairs was already part of a much broader digital transformation within the organization. Well, that means we were going to be generating far more data than we have in the past, far broader and richer sets of data. That also gave us a really good opportunity to really test the metal of the data platform because as it currently stands today, our repairs function operates across three operational systems. Different types of repairs are done on different systems, and what the business needed was a single holistic view of all of that. So it really was an excellent test for us to be able to design a data model, deliver the data model, build the data pipelines, and deliver that, that single version of the truth, essentially, in terms of, uh, of repairs. In terms of the, um, the use cases, in terms of what we've gotten um, out of it in the first six months, um, excellent um, uh, feedback from the business in the fact that they now have advanced dashboards that they can use on a daily basis. Those dashboards are sitting directly on top of our data platform, so they can drill right the way down to the, to the atomic level, right down to the individual records, and really get under the surface in terms of what's driving the numbers they're seeing in their, their reports and what really is driving their KPIs. Also, we finally have a unified view of all of the repairs across the organization. They no longer have to go to three different systems, multiple spreadsheets, trying to stitch that view together. It's all there, and they can slice and dice it. And as of this week, we've actually put self-serve capability into the hands of the business. We now have people who are you know, SQL uh, proficient, understand how to use data within the business unit, actively using the data warehouse and really actually doing data analysis. And finally, we've got a trusted view of that data. We understand its lineage, we understand its metadata, we know where it's come from, um, and we can uh, trace that all the way back to the source if needs be. Cool, so in terms of how we went about this then, um, from a business perspective and from a data strategy perspective, I was all too aware that the, uh, a data platform and a data strategy is a bit like an iceberg. There's the bit above the waterline that everybody sees and everybody interacts with. So those things like our BI platform, our reporting tools, the tools that allow us to do data analysis, tools that allow us to do machine learning and whatnot, that's very much like the user experience. That's typically what the business will see. But there's so much more below the waterline that the business typically won't actually engage with, nor do they really care about it, but we have to as part of the data strategy. Things like privacy by design, GDPR compliance, data modeling and design, um, understanding data governance and having everything associated with data governance, your data lineage, your, your metadata, your data dictionaries. So the challenge that we had given to Doc Collective around this was, well, from an MVB, I want essentially elements of all of this. I didn't want to not have a complete data ecosystem from the get-go, but obviously that meant that we had to prioritize different areas. So what elements were we going to deliver fully as part of phase one? Which elements would we implement the technical capability, but we wouldn't focus on until future phases? And you can see in terms of this um, diagram, for those of you who are a bit close to the front, we, we took a very varied approach. We actually didn't focus all that heavily on the above the waterline stuff. We know that that will come eventually, and we have to take the business on the you know, essentially the data literacy journey to actually be able to, to utilize those tools. But we focused very, very heavily on the foundational elements that sit underneath to really springboard us ahead when it comes to the, the next phases of the transformation. Cool. 
So I get to talk about the, the meat of the product. So um, with that balancing of priorities in mind, we, as we wanted to deal, deliver that whole steel thread, we had to make sure that we're building a platform that is fit for the future. So first of all, we partnered with Google. Um, so with Google Cloud, they've got some really exciting tools. They've heavily invested in AI and machine learning with things like Gemini, with Vertex. So we had that in mind when we developed the platform. We absolutely followed best practice so that we can make sure that we're embedding all those priorities throughout the platform as well. So first of all, here's the overall picture. Um, there is more detail below this. So if you do want to talk about engineering, I'll be happy to introduce you to my colleagues as well afterwards, and we can have a much more detailed chat. But at a high level, there's four key components that I'm going to take you through. So first of all, looking at those priorities, we absolutely knew that in advance we wanted to make something that's scalable, resilient, and can be recovered easily. So we use change data capture throughout that process when we're ingesting new data into the platform storage. Um, that allows us to make sure that, have you ever had those days where um, a job fails over the weekend and you come into the office on a Monday morning and all of your dashboards are failed <laughs> and it takes a long time to recover? Well, that's a thing of the past. So basically, we can recover where we've left off and the whole pipeline can start again. So you can actually start to capture that data really nicely and easy and recover your service. That then goes into the storage layer, which we based on a data lake and a lake house architecture. And also, we've got a medallion model as well within that. So bronze, silver, gold, where we start to capture that data in raw. Then we make sure that we apply our quality rules, and then we normalize it, ready for reporting and analytics in the future. So on top of that, you can actually start to be ready for that next phase where you take it into the warehouse. But also, using that data lake, we've enabled our data science user stories in the future. So we keep our, our head of data science nice and happy as well, and he's smiling. And then throughout that, you can see that we've applied data governance. We've applied security. So we've got masking, and we're making sure that we're compliant. We can deliver use cases like uh, GDPR. Um, so we're not compromising on any part of the functionality of the platform. And then also, we've got monitoring and logging capability as well embedded throughout. Then this is where the magic happens, especially if you're a data modeler. I, can, I know some data modelers in the crowd here today, so they're probably going to be a bit more excited. Um, so this is where we use BigQuery to, to schedule our views. So we've got a curation, a curated, and a presentation layer so that we're enabling this to turn into actionable insight. Because you can ingest data, and you can use as much technology as you want. But ultimately, if it's not actionable, it doesn't really deliver any value. So we'll talk a bit more about that on the next slide. And Rob's going to take us through how we've actually uh, we put that together. And then finally, we need to make sure that it's consumable. So I talked about having the user in mind. So we actually pull this together into a visualization layer so that actually it's really nice and actionable for a user. And one of the great things about Google is they have LookML. And that allows you to have that semantic layer. So it's actually translatable into business language. And it's really easily consumable for analysts. So do you want to talk about the data model? Sure. So in terms of the data model and our approach to this, um, it's the classic situation where it's all well and good having the most fantastic technology. If you don't have the data structured in the right way sitting on top of that technology, it's next to useless. So we've taken, as um, Kaz has um, outlined, an approach in terms of like multi-layering our data platform to make sure that we've got the right data architecture at the right layers for the right use cases. So you can see here um, on the slide, we've got a data lake which holds all of our raw data, essentially like um, exactly in the same format that we get it from the source systems. And then we take it through the various layers um, through, through the, the the system to um, uh, meet certain use cases in terms of uh, the consumption of that data. So curation layer is where we have done our data model. So we have uh, worked out in terms of what the facts, the dimensions are, what the attributes are, and what we believe the, um, uh, the single source of that, that truth needs to be, and what the actual masking needs to be across that data so it's a single consistent set of values. That's typically very Kimball-based, very uh, relational, which is fantastic in the fact that it's very flexible, but not necessarily all that conducive for being run in a cloud environment. MPP databases don't particularly like joins. They don't run very efficiently, which could impact the user experience. So within the curated layer, we start to flatten that data out into um, key data sets, which are basically subject um, matter oriented. So we will have, for example, a repairs data set or a handful of repairs data sets, depending in terms of what we're looking to look at. But within the curated layer, um, critically, we retain all of the history. So we have got history and repairs going back to, the, I think, about 2003. So you can imagine that is 
daily delta data. So there's a, a, a vast wealth of data um, and history that we can actually call upon within the curated layer, but at least it's in like white flat tables, so those queries are going to run pretty efficiently. And that's really where a data analyst will be playing, understanding what's happened in the past to try and explain what's happening now or even predict what's going to happen in the future. The presentation layer is optimized for business intelligence and for reporting. So it won't have the depth of history that we would have within the curated layer. It will tend to be um, latest record only or just the records you'll actually need for reporting purposes and only the attributes we need for reporting as well. So very small, tight, snappy data sets, which is going to give excellent performance in terms of our dashboard so we get a good user experience at the, at the far side. Um, and yeah, that is, that is the, a, a quick whistle stop tour in terms of our data architecture. Cool. So. In terms of all this then, what we've actually delivered to the business so far, um, we've got a number of bankable be benefits. And they essentially rate from internally within the data office, within the broader business, and within our customers, um, or the, within the customer space. So within the data office, as I mentioned previously, we're already on track for making about 1.5 million pounds worth of savings um, in terms of uh, server and licensing costs. We've got a 30% reduction of FTE on a day-to-day -day basis in the fact that we've managed to automate a huge amount of our, our manual processes, and that's only going to increase over time. We still have a lot of manual stuff there. As we get more and more data into the data platform, those will be automated. So we expect to see those um, uh, increases in terms of FTE availability just increase over time. And that's essentially about making sure that our analysts are working on value-add activities. We're not looking to kind of make people redundant. We don't want to actually shrink the size of the data office. What we want to do is make sure that we're driving real value throughout the business uh, where it needs to be. Within the business itself, already the um, dashboards that I mentioned earlier are starting to have an impact in terms of their forecasting, their focus, their strategy in terms of what they're looking to do. And the ultimate goal is to be able to do more with less. That could be more repairs for the same amount of engineers. It could be more repairs for the same money yeah, at the, the same cost associated with it. And essentially what we want to do is to be able to accelerate, be able to get more repairs like running through the business which means for our customers, they're just going to have a better customer experience. They're not going to have to wait as long for repair. The repairs aren't going to fall between the cracks. They're not going to have to chase constantly in terms of where engineers are because we're actually using the data to drive our scheduling and, and efficiency from a, an operational side of things. So you were set a challenge earlier on, and that challenge was, was tough. <laughs> so we needed to make sure that we had an accessible platform, accessible data. Tick. We did that. Then we needed to make sure that we had data trusted, and it was quality data. Tick. We did that. We needed to make sure that it was governed. Within the platform, we have all those governance processes and the right tools in order to enable the business to govern that data. Tick. We need to make sure it was secure. By using Google Best in, in Class platform, we were able to secure that data. We've got masking applied where it needs to be applied, so we're compliant and secure. Tick. We needed to make sure that we're enabling actionable insight and we're able to build dashboards off the back of this. With that data model, we've enabled that. Tick. And then finally, we wanted to make sure it was scalable and resilient. With all the technology we've used, like CDC and the capabilities within Google, tick. We did that. But we know that that is just the beginning. So data transformation takes multiple years, and they are quite scary to do. But using the steel thread methodology, we've made it easy and accessible. And we can chunk that up across a, a multi-year program. And in the investment that we save and we create at the beginning can enable us to make a self-capitalizing model to pay for the next phases. So it makes it a lot easier and accessible for businesses. But that's not the end. We also need to make sure that people are enabled to take on the platform in the future. So gradually, we're increasing capability at PFP to enable our colleagues to take on the platform so we can basically just be the, the accelerators in the future looking at advanced use cases. And actually, it's a self-sustaining model. So as we start to iterate more, we allow ourselves to, to give that um, leadership back to the business. OK, I just got the, the warning about time as well. And uh, I think we've got some time for questions. So are there any questions amongst the crowd? Nothing at the moment. OK. Well, hopefully you can see that a data transformation is more accessible. So please come join us. Build your data platform. Take a leap. Thank you very much. Thank you.